Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Today we're going to continue working with fractions uh, and we're going to kind of play off of what we did in the last section. Recall in the last section we started with a mixed fraction and we showed you a very easy way to convert that to an improper fraction. Very simple, easy technique. And we also said that mixed fractions and improper fractions are just two different ways to write exactly the same thing. Okay, exactly the same thing. So if we're able to go from mixed fractions and convert to improper fractions, then shouldn't there be a way to start with an improper fraction and go back the other way and end up with a mixed fraction? The answer is yes, there is. So we need to be able to convert both ways. We've already learned how to take a mixed fraction and end up as an improper fraction. Now what we need to do is start as an improper fraction and move the other way and end up as a mixed number. So this is an important skill that we're doing here. And so we're going to tackle it by showing example problems. Let's say I have the improper fraction 13 halves. This is an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. That's the definition of an improper fraction. So the way that you do this, first of all, is something that I haven't quite told you yet. And that is, believe it or not, fractions in general, we, we know that they mean parts of a whole and things like that. But in general, fractions can also be thought of as division. I'll say that one more time. Fractions can also be thought of as division. So even though we haven't said it much, this, when we have 13 halves like this, you can think of it as 13 divided by 2. It's another way of writing division. So usually, you know, you have that division symbol, you know, you've learned in math before. Well, when you start seeing fractions, you can think of it as 13 divided by 2 is the same thing as 13 halves, right? I know that seems a little bit odd at first, but that's just another way to think of, of what these fractions can mean. So whenever you see it like this, the reason I bring that up is because you want to convert um, to this mixed number. So the way you do it is you take 13 and you go ahead and you divide it by 2 because it's 13 divided by 2. That's what this fraction really means. So let's take 13 and divide by 2 and let's see what you have. So uh, what would be the answer? If we take 2 times 6, that'll be as close as we can get uh, to, to 13 without going over because 2 times 6 is 12. And if we subtract 13 minus 12, we're going to get 1. So what this means is the answer uh, to taking 13 and dividing by 2 is 6 with a remainder of 1. And that's, those are the kinds of skills we've been doing in math for a very long time, just doing simple division like this. All right. So the way you write this is, to make your mixed fraction, you do the division, and the number that you get on top is the big number, 6, the remainder goes in the top of the fraction, and then the original bottom of the fraction stays the same. Six and a half. That is the answer. Okay, so you take 13 divided by 2, or 13 halves, you actually do the division, and you try to figure out how many times will 2 go into this. The answer is it'll go 6 times. So since it will go 6 whole times, you put the 6 out front. And then you need to figure out how much is left over. That's what we call the remainder. So we do this division, we go six times with one left over. So the remainder is one out of two pieces, so one half. The two comes from the original fraction. You can check your work, by the way, because we know how to convert from mixed back to improper. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13, so it would be 13 halves, and that's exactly what we have here. That's exactly what we have here. So let's go ahead and I think you'll get the hang of this more as we do more and more problems. Let's say we have 14 thirds. And I want to represent this as a mixed number, 14 thirds. So again, this, even though we're calling it 14 thirds, you can think of fractions as division. So if we have 14, it's basically being divided by 3. So how many whole times do you think this will go in there? Uh, well, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 times 5 is 15, but that's too far. So 3 times 4 is going to give us 12. That's as close as we can get, and when we subtract them, you get a remainder of 2. So we say the remainder is 2. So when you do this division, it goes 4 whole times. Let me switch colors. It goes 4 whole times, so the big 4 is what sits out. The remainder is 2, and we write it over the bottom of the original fraction, which is 3. So the answer is 4 and 2 thirds. 
And if you want to check your work, you can easily go backwards. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. 14 thirds would be if you check your work, and that's the right answer. All right, we'll just keep on marching along, giving you some practice. What if I have 16 fifths? 16 fifths. And how do I convert that to a mixed fraction? Okay, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to have 16. I'm dividing it by 5. How many times do you think that will go in there? Well, 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. That's about as close as I can get. So 5 times 3 is 15. When I subtract, I get a remainder of 1. So that's a remainder of 1. So since this division means it can go 3 whole times, the answer is going to be a big 3, and the remainder is a 1, and it goes over the original fraction denominator, which is 5, 3 and 1 fifth. And there's always a way to check your work in math, so 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16, 16 fifths. All right, so our next problem Let's get a little more practice with this. Let's say it is 13 eighths. How do we go ahead and, and uh, reduce this guy or transform it into a mixed number? Is we are going to have, all right, we're taking 13 and we're dividing 8 into it. How many times will this go? Well, 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. That's too much. So it only goes one time. And 13 minus 8 is only going to give you a 5. So the remainder is actually a 5. So the remainder is 5. So since I know that, when I do this division, it goes one whole time with a remainder of 5 out of my original denominator, which is 8. 1 and 5 eighths. And that is the answer. So once you get the hang of this method, then it becomes clockwork, and you can just do it and do it and do it, and don't stress out and think about it too much. To check your work, 1 times 8 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13 over 8. 13 over 8, so it matches with what we started with. We always like to check our answers if we can, because then we know that we have the question correct. Let's do 10 fourths. This is an interesting one. I'll show you why. It's not hard. It's not, nothing hard about it. So we'll take 10, and we'll divide 4 into it. How many times will this go? It'll go 2 times, because 2 times 4 is 8. And we'll do this subtraction, and we're going to get 2. 10 minus 8 is 2, so the remainder is 2. So, to write our answer, what this is telling us is when we take 10 and divide it by 4, we actually get it to go 2 whole times with a remainder of 2 over our original denominator. So 2 and 2 fourths is actually the right answer. That is actually right. But look at it carefully. 2 fourths, the number 2 fourths, that fraction can be simplified further because I can actually divide the top and the bottom of this by something, some number, that can make it simpler, some number other than 1. So in this case, let me just write it all down here. 2 and 2 fourths. What can I divide by? Well, I know I can divide the top by 2, and if I do that, I can also divide the bottom by 2. So what I have is big 2 from here. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And if you think about it, this makes sense, because 2 and a half is the same as 2 and 2 fourths. If I take a pizza and chop it into four pieces and only have two of those pieces, then it's like half of the pizza, which is what I have here. So when you do anything with fractions, including this stuff, when you get to the end of the problem, always check to see if it's simplified. If it's not simplified, then simplify it yourself by doing some division. When you look at all the other problems, the answers we got, you can't simplify this one, you can't simplify this one, you can't simplify this one, you can't simplify this one. This is the first one that we can actually simplify. All right, so let's do one last one. Let's do 21 over 6. Okay, let's do 21 over 6. And so what we're going to have is 21 is basically being divided by 6. How many times will this go in? Well, 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 3 is 18. That's about as close as I can get. So 6 times 3 is 18. And when I subtract these guys, I end up getting 3 as a remainder. So the remainder is 3. So then what I'm going to have at the end of the day this division goes three whole times with a remainder of three left over 
out of the original denominator, which is 6. That's how we always write it. Now, this is correct, 3 and 3 sixths. That's true. But can you simplify this further? The answer is yes, you can. Because if I go over here and I say 3 and 3 sixths, what can I divide the top and the bottom here by to make it simpler? Well, I can divide the top by 3, and then I can also divide the bottom by 3. So what's going to happen when you do this is you'll get 3 from here. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the answer is actually 3 and a half, which is exactly the same thing, by the way, as 3 and 3 6, because it's the same thing as before. If you take a pizza, chop it into 6 pieces, and take 3 of those pieces, that's like having half of the pizza. So it's like having 3 and a half pizzas uh, in, all, in, those, in those cases there. So what we've done here is we've done the exact opposite of what we've done in the last section. And here we start with an improper fraction and we use division to get at the mixed number. So just remember, anytime you see a mixed number or an improper fraction, you can always freely move back and forth between those two using this technique and also what we've done in the previous section. So make sure you understand this, practice it, uh, and then follow me on to the next section where we will continue our journey of learning fractions with step-by-step -step example problems.